So when we learn how to program, then there is a list of topics that we prefer to skip learning, like environment variables. And in this video, we are going to simplify what are environment variables and how it could affect your programs, and as well as how it affects the entire system that a program executes on. So in this video, I'm going to make sure that you will understand environment variables and also different kinds of environment variables, both on Windows and Linux based systems. So there is a lot to expect from that tutorial. Now, if you will enjoy the content of this video, please be sure to hit the like button and as well as subscribe to my channel so you will never miss any video that I will be publishing in the future. Let's get started. Now, an environment variable is basically a key value pair that we could inject inside a process that is running right now on your system. It doesn't matter if it is a Linux or Windows based system, each one of those systems are going to have hundreds of processes where it is going to read from specific environment variables so it could affect the way that a process executes. Pay attention, for example, let's say that we have a process that stores its logs in somewhere. Now take a look in the red process here, we pass in an environment variable that could affect the location where it stores its logs because we pass in a specific environment variable that maybe this process supports. So that is why environment variables are useful because in the next time I execute this process, I could actually change by only passing in this specific environment variable, the location where it stores its logs. So in this video, we are going to take a look how environment variables are going to improve your projects that you are writing in your favorite programming language. And as well as we are going to understand the differences between regular environment variables to system environment variables. So let's get started. All right, so right now we are running Windows Terminal in a Windows based system. Now I'm going to show along the way how the commands that I'm going to write could be also achieved in a Linux system. So don't worry if you are using a Mac or any other kind of Linux distribution. All right, so now the way that you can set an environment variable is by using set and that will be export in a Linux based system. And then all you have to do is give up your key value pair. Now, just as an example, I'm going to set interval equals to one and that will be it. Now this process has an environment variable where its key is interval and the value is one. Now to prove you that, then we can also access our environment variables by using the echo command and that will be echo. And then to access your environment variables, you have to wrap up your key name by percentage signs. So now I can say in interval and then I will receive the value of one back. Now I intentionally came up with another terminal session to show you that an environment variable is only going to be belong to a specific process. If I was to execute here the same command to reading this environment variable, then we are not going to receive anything special back. We are just going to receive the same output. And this really means that this environment variable is not recognized by the right terminal that we have opened. Okay, but still how the environment variables are going to be useful. So in this directory, I came up with a Python program which I developed before recording this tutorial. And don't worry if you don't have any programming experience, currently we are only focusing on how environment variables are going to be useful in the programs that you are going to develop in no matter programming language you are learning. Okay, so this program that I developed intentionally, I designed it in a way where it needs to read the environment variable that is called interval. So this means that if I was to execute this program and the way that you can execute a Python program is with that way. So you can see that this is going to change the behavior of my program because it sleeps one second. And this is a great effect because if I was to set the interval environment variable to another value, then it would affect the way that this program runs. To show you that, then I'm going to stop that, clean my screen and set up this interval to another value and I'm going to run my program. And you can see that it immediately took effect. Now it is slower and it sleeps two seconds. So that's one way how environment variables are useful. All right, so now that we understood the idea of an environment variable, 
let's also see a list of environment variables that is currently on your system. Now, not only a single process could have an environment variable, but also the entire system has environment variables as well. And that is known as system environment variables. And that is going to affect the way that your entire system works. And to see the list of those environment variables, then you can actually execute the command of set without specifying anything. And for a Linux environment, it will be print env. Now, if I was to run that, then you can see that I have a large list of environment variables that are set up on my computer. Now, you can also see not only the system environment variables, but the environment variables that are actually set right now attached to that process. Because if I was to scroll up a bit, then we're still going to see this interval equals to 2. And that is important thing to understand. This set command gives you a combination of all the environment variables that are available right now after calculating what are the environment variables that are attached to that process together with the entire system. Okay, so let's clean the screen. Now, you can understand that we can access those system environment variables yet from our terminal because as we said, the set command gives you the combination of both. So if I was to echo username, then obviously I will see the username that I'm currently logged into that system. And the same applies for Linux, only changing the syntax here from being percentage by adding only one dollar sign in the beginning. Now, just a quick side note, the system environment variables are also divided into two categories, which are user specific system variables and public system environment variables. So you can see that by going to your environment variables in a Windows machine, for example, and you can see how there is a differentiation between user variables to system variables. And if you want to see the system environment variables on your Windows environment, just search for that from the Windows search bar and look up for environment variables. And that's the window that I showed you before. So now that we got the idea of environment variables, we should be focusing on one environment variable that is called pat. Pat is a very special environment variable that has a list of directories where each directory could have any program that you'd like to and it could just be executed directly from a terminal. And that's very useful because it will give you a list of shortcuts that you can just go ahead and specify their name in the terminal and you can execute those programs. Now, seeing the content of the path environment variable is as easy as seeing echo percentage sign twice and then just writing pad and you can see that I have a list of directories you can see that those are separated by a semi column right so that's an important environment variable now those are directories where in each directory you could have any program that you would like to and it could just be executed from the terminal okay so I open the separated terminal here to show you some examples now, a quick important note, you want to be really careful before you change the path environment variable in the system level. So if you accidentally remove all the list of directories from the system level, meaning from the user interface that I showed you before, then this could cause a serious damage to your system because the most basic executables like CD or DIR or even the exit executables, those are not going to function because those are happen to be just small programs that are executables that are located somewhere in the list of directories. So you really want to be careful before you change some of the values inside the list of directories inside the path environment variable. Now in this example, we are only going to override the path environment variable in the process level, meaning that setting up the path in this session, meaning specifically to that process, is not going to cause a serious damage. It is just going to set the path temporarily for this terminal. So I'm going to set a new path specifically for that terminal. And I'm going to point this to only one directory, although I could give a list of directories, but one should be enough for this example. And I'm just going to point to my shortcuts directory. Now let's go to that directory and see what is inside of that. So it should be my shortcuts. All right, so if I was to list the content, then you can see that I have my file.txt. 
So this means that my file.txt should be executable now directly from this terminal because we have this inside the path. So I can say my file.txt and you can see that this file is being opened. So that is the magic behind the path environment variable. It is very useful to have quick shortcuts on your system and you can go ahead and play with it carefully and I promise that it will improve the way that you work so you will work faster because you will be able to execute a lot of stuff faster. Alright, so now that we understood how path works in Windows, let's also give a quick example how this could be a good thing in a Linux system. Now I'm going to assume that you have a basic Linux knowledge before showing you the examples in the next two to three minutes. Alright, so now I have just a Linux system that I'm working on connected to it from an SSH session. Now I'm going to show you what is inside the path by only saying dollar pad right now and you can see that I have a list of directories as well unlike Windows it is divided with columns not semicolons now I'm just going to go inside one of those paths that are located inside the path and I'm just going to add there a file that is going to be executable so I'm going to edit a file by vim and I'm going to just point to that location I'm using root privileges for showing you the basic examples just so it will be easier to execute those commands. Now, let's say that we like to call this my executable like that. And now that we have done this, then I'm going to press on insert and I'm just going to write in one command that is the most basic command that you can have is to echo something, all right? So I will just say echo my custom command, all right? So that will be our own command and you can actually go ahead and write here anything that you would like to that could be executed line by line in Linux. You can also use here some bash script that you can just write it. And now I'm going to save this file by pressing escape colon wq like that. Now this file now is located inside one of the executables. So we should be able to just go ahead and say my executable and to execute that. But before that, we'd like to verify that this file has permissions to being executable. So I will say change mod and I will just use plus X to add executable permissions. And again, I will just point to the location to of the file, excuse me. And now that I have done this, then we should be able to execute this directly like that. And you can see that now we have the result of my custom command because the only line that we wrote inside this file was echo my custom command. So that's how Pat is also very powerful in a Linux system. Okay, so I hope you learned something new in that video. Let me know down in the comments if the explanations was clear to you. And don't forget to subscribe and hit the like button if you enjoyed in that one. And I will see you very soon.